I did want to say that on the quiz, there are uh, actual photographs of some cells in mitosis. So you might want to take a close look at the actual photographs in your textbook because um, I have some, I think they're onion cells that are slides, pictures of slides that I took. And I'm going to ask you to identify the stage of mitosis on those slides. So I would take a look at those. I'm going to try to slide here and see if I get a better. Um, better focus. I guess it's not much better. It seems even a little slower, but a dim day, everything changes. Other than that, questions that you have for chapters 12 and 13, sort of your last opportunity before you take the quiz. And then if not, I'm going to start talking a little bit about chapter 14. There's not a lot to say because there are several videos already up on your, um, yes, the test is multiple choice. But you will have to look at some photographs of pictures of mitosis and identify the stage that the cell is in. I don't use fill in the blank because in science, if I don't enter every possible version of the word that you would type in, it's marked incorrect. So for example, if I type in metaphase and I put a capital M and you put a lowercase m, it will be marked wrong by Canvas. And I have to go back in and check every person's. And then if you misspell it, of course, it should be wrong, but um, Either way, I have to go back in and check every person's uh, test. So I'm not using fill in the blanks or having you spell anything, which is going to be a disadvantage for you when you get to anatomy and physiology, but um, it's more than I can manage in bio one at this point. So I would still practice your spelling and try to spell things correctly, like in your notes and things, because when you get to AMP and microbiology, we will expect you to be able to spell them correctly, but I'm not going to be testing you on that in bio one particularly. All right. Anything else from 12 and 13? Yes, no. All right, then. I think, I think it's kind of a short one. I'm not sure, but I think it's only it's only two chapters, so I think it's kind of short. But I didn't really wasn't really focused on that yesterday. So today, then I would real quickly like to talk a little bit about I'm gonna hide all of you guys. Um, I'd like to talk real quickly about the beginning of chapter 14, because I think there's a few tips that I can give you that will be helpful to you understanding what's going on in, in that chapter. My advice would be for the first thing I would do is I would make a list of these vocabulary words. Because you must know the words and their definitions. or um, completing the problems when, when we get to them, the genetics problems, it's going to be next to impossible. And they're just words you're gonna have to memorize. So I'm gonna make a list here. It's a, usually about 10 to 12 words that you'll see them on the handout for chapter 14 that I've put them in bold. So as we come upon them, um, I have put them in bold and if they're part of the lecture going along and you'll see they're at the end of page two there um, where it says more vocab. And again, these are just words that you have to have to know on, on the tip of your fingers or otherwise you're just, you're really gonna struggle. So um, chromosome, of course, or chromosomes. And we've already talked a lot about that in chapter 12 and 13, genome meaning all of the chromosomes that an or all the genetic material or all the chromosomes an organism has. 
And then I would also add here, um, very different from a gene, very different from a um, gene is analogous to character or characteristic. Um, gene is also relatively equivalent to a, a protein that is expressed in a cell or an organism. An allele that is going to be analogous to what your book is calling a trait or a variation of a gene that an organism possesses, variation or variations. on the chromosome. So genes are actually places, locations on chromosomes for particular traits or characteristics. You'll also see these words a lot, phenotype and genotype. So the phenotype is what the organism looks like, the physical characteristics. I find that helpful to remember, pH, physical characteristics, phenotype, what you see. The genotype is the alleles the organism has. The organisms that we're going to be discussing are all 2N diploid. 2N. So they're going to have two copies of each gene. They might be the same copy, the same identical sequence, or they might be different. And that's where these words come in, homozygous or heterozygous. And if you're homozygous, that's going to mean that you have two copies of the same allele or a gene or a characteristic. If you're heterozygous, you're going to have two copies also, but they're going to be two different copies. Also, you'll see the words showing up over and over. I'm going to start a new text box over here. Um, you'll see dominant and recessive. And those are related to which allele is expressed in a particular generation. We call the first generation the F1 generation. And that stands for first filial generation. That's a Mendel word. Um, the F2 is the second generation. And I'm just going to put here is usually a cross between or a mating. to F1 individuals. Now, of course, that's not permitted or not socially acceptable in humans. So we won't be talking about any F2 humans. Uh, and again, in some animals, this doesn't work very well because it causes a lot of um, problems with traits that are recessive and detrimental to the organism in the homozygous condition. But in plants, which is what we're gonna focus on in chapter 14. And smaller animals like insects, in particular fruit flies, because we're gonna talk about fruit flies a lot, and some um, helminthic worms, you can do the experiments where you produce an F1 generation and then an F2 generation. What else is on my list? Genotype, phenotype, so that's how many words here? One, two, three, four. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Yeah, that's probably about the whole list. Again, you'll see them pop up in uh, as as you go along in chapter fourteen. And if you at least have a definition of those words, or I would strongly recommend that you try to read the chapter first. I would watch the videos from summer. I think there are three or four of them for this chapter. The first one is just sort of the foundation, the historical, the concept portion of Mendel and the gene idea, mostly focusing on peas because that's what Mendel used. The second lecture, I think it's titled mini lecture or part two, that is specifically how to take a word problem and convert it into a Punnett square, like how Mendel 
in terms of Mendel. And then there's actually a portion, uh, I think it might be a third video that's specifically tips for you when you're reading a genetics problem, how to convert it from the word problem to a Punnett square correctly, like literally what steps you should follow. And then the fourth part or part three, I believe is the second Mendel's second law independent assortment. So that's with two characteristics. And then looks like there's notes for part three, part three. Yes, so looks like I've got part three is dihybrid crosses. And then there'll be some practice problems for you to try that are some that are just what we call monohybrid crosses. So that's a single characteristic or trait. And then there'll be some that are dihybrid crosses, which are two characteristic traits. I will take a look at those. I will grade them and give you credit for doing them. I think there are four or five problems. I'm trying to look here. Oh, and we can use it, the Halloween problems because it's Halloween time. So um, yeah, I think there's one, two, three. Yeah, there's a handful of problems that I'm gonna give you. And then the quiz for 14, and then we will talk about some extensions to Mendel's rules. And then we will also do a tiny, tiny bit of chapter 15. We will only talk about um, sex link traits and anuploidy pretty much. And then there'll be a time for another quiz. So this one comes relatively quickly, but I'll try to give you about a week, a week and a few days to get through the genetics problems because for some people they come really quickly. It's pretty easy for other people. They really struggle with this. If you had it in high school, it'll help a lot. If you haven't, um, <coughs> excuse me, I would suggest reading the chapter, watching the videos, um, trying the homeworks. The homeworks in this case in mastering are mostly about the concepts. They're mostly about the Mendel portion and the relating what happened in his experiments and the definitions of the words to um, sort of just the language we use in genetics. And then the practical portion will be the homework problems for you to try. So that's all I know about that offhand. I realize that most of you are going to still be thinking about chapters 12 and 13. So, um, and like I said, I've already recorded extensively for chapter 14, um, super organized and bit by bit so that it's in, uh, they're long lectures, but there's many of them that follow a very particular sequence. So I would recommend that you watch all of them. On Monday, I will try to cobble together a short note outline for parts of chapter 15, because again, we're not gonna do very much of 15 at all. It's sort of beyond the scope of bio one, especially bio one online, but we will talk about sex link traits, anuploidy, and um, some genetic testing. So we will cover chapter 15 a little bit, but not a ton. And then I will also ask you some, I will put some genetics practice problems with sex link traits into the second set of genetics practice problems. So go ahead and try the first set. I'll change the due date later today. This week's lab, I think it's gonna be kidney because just we have to kind of get that one out of the way. It's supposed to, it's related to osmosis. I'll put up the video. And again, you guys are doing great. I've looked at a few of them, but not all. Um, for the other lab exercises, a photo of yourself with your results and answer the questions that are in the um, lab book would be great. Amen.